Ladies and gentlemen, we are back at the Sub Nation stage, live from E3. We're in sunny Los Angeles, locked in an air-conditioned box. But it is an absolute pleasure to be your host. My name is Machine, and my next guest uh, has been my boss, has been called Reedy Yi, has been called Paul, Paulie, G-Man, G-Money, lots of names. Uh, his name is, of course, Paul Red Eye Shalina, and uh, a figurehead of the esports scene, and, uh, of course, a primarily uh, ruling analyst desks, casting desks, something like 50 games. There's probably 65 now. 81. Eight, you know, like 50, 60, 80 yeah. games involved in. And um, it's an absolute honor. You've got so much to talk about. You, you used to be my boss. I know. And now I'm <laughs> getting to give you an interview about <laughs> so weird. new exciting projects. I know, it's very strange, yeah. It's a weird, I mean, I, I love watching what you've done. Yeah. But genuinely, it's, it's been do. one of those small, but I don't, I would never say I take any credit for what you've done, of course, but yes, early on I employed you. Yes, we wanted to bring you to ESL in Germany. Um, and we gave you those opportunities, but the rest has been your success. But it's been a real pleasure for me to see you just going yeah. around the world doing your, doing your stuff. And it's, I think also, I mentioned earlier to Alex as well, um, I think when you started doing a lot of hosting, it, it made me better. Because I realized, actually, although you and I don't compete, because no. we're not like that with each other, we're obviously friends, but you were getting gigs that I previously got, and I just suddenly thought, hold on a minute, who's this new kid? Yeah, right. Like, what, what am I doing? I, and, and, I, I must get better, I must improve. And I have the same thing right now. There was a period where, like, there was kind of, you know, if Red Eye's not doing it, Machine will do it, if Machine's not doing it, right. And now, so many, you know, new yeah. faces taking it yeah, to the hosting. And, and it, all it's going to do is make me pull my socks up. Yeah. I'm sitting there like, I really wish I was doing that. Yeah. Okay, let me, let me see what I didn't do and what I should yeah. be doing. It's really I, I saw your major prep and I... Oh, yeah. A little, little piece of pride in the heart thank with your you, Excel spreadsheets. You. I hate Excel with a passion. Really not my jam, <laughs> but I tried. I tried the red eye approach at least once. But no, listen, you're here, you're here for, to, to, to discuss a new exciting podcast yes. you're starting. Like, yeah. I'm actually sitting here now thinking, wait, why, why have red eye doesn't have a podcast already? I'm kind of surprised. You, have you ever done anything like that? Uh, no, not really. I mean, back in the day, we did... Um, we did like an Unreal Tournament podcast, like, I don't know, 12, 13, 15 years ago yeah. or something. So let's just say... So let's say no. Yeah, let's just say no. Um, it's always something I've had in the back of my mind that I wanted to do, because I always felt like I'm very passionate about preserving esports history. Um, you know, what, what, what happened to this event? What are these stories? What are these players? You don't have to fade away. Who won? All that kind of stuff. And we know, thanks to losing things like Gotfrag and Cadrid and all these great sites over the years, that that history is gone. And so I've always been quite passionate about trying to preserve some of that but instead of just preserving it from my point of view and, and me kind of rambling into a microphone about hey I remember at ESWC in 2005 did we you did just, it right, I don't did want you to just be do a red guy. eye impression you just did an impression I, of I yourself did, I did an impression of myself I don't want to be that guy okay so instead I wanted to start a podcast which allowed me to fulfill that ambition of, of preserving some history but in the words of the people that were there at the time okay so the idea behind the podcast is we're going to do 10 shows in Series 1. Okay. And if it's popular and people support it and they like it, then we'll, we'll talk about doing more. Do we have a name? Uh, it's called The Voice of Esports, okay. um, which is, I guess, related to me. But it's more, it's more about the voices of esports. Yeah, it's you might it's want about to, yeah. okay. the people of esports. And it's purely audio only, so there's no television. I know it's a bit weird in our day and age because we're all about streaming. But I think podcasting is a very undervalued part of esports. And we don't have enough of it right now. So I'm hoping that we right. can... We can add something new into that. But also, I don't want to just do the standard interview of, hi, Alex, talk to me about your career. Sure. I mean, that's interesting, but it's, it's not so interesting after you've done I mean, it once it's been 20 done. times, yeah, right? Precisely. And you've had those interviews. So yeah. I want to be, you know, the first guy we got on is Marcus DJ Wee Graham, who's a personal hero of mine. Um, he used to be my boss. He yes. was my mentor. I feel like we're going around in some sort of weird cycle now. Never stops. Um, and it was just a thrill to be able to interview him. And, get him to talk about himself and where he came from and his childhood and you know, what games did he love playing and, and why, why did he want to do esports and okay. so I want to preserve that kind of history too and then get people's views on you know what is franchising is it good for esports and, and get people to talk about the issues of now here's a question for you you are a freelance host yeah as am I yeah if I was if I was have, thinking about you know certain questions like that why do I get anxious about discussing, you know, is franchising good? Like, I would be very scared to speak candidly and honestly 
when you know there could be a, a job you're losing by talking about that. Sure. I mean, is, are you is that something you're conscious of? Are you stepping uh, a little away from the? Not that you're not looking for a hosting job, no, but are you but willing you to put that on the line yeah, a bit more? Yeah. I think it's. Um, I mean, that in itself is an interesting question. I, I guess I probably do. In the back of my mind, I probably do think. I need to be relatively careful about what I say. But, but, but at the same time, I want to be honest. I yeah. want to be straightforward about it. I want people to know my views on something. But I also think there's an element of trust. If I, if I say something about Blizzard or Overwatch League and it's um, unreasonable, then I would expect them to not want to hire me. If it's, if it's a criticism, but it's reasonable, and I present it in a reasonable criticism. Way, then I don't see that they would get upset. And I trust them not to get upset with me for having a view. Valve certainly haven't in the past. I've criticized yeah. Valve many times and thought they could have done something better, but they've taken it constructively and they've thought, actually, that's a valid point. He's not, he's not, I'm not being mean to be mean for mean's sake or just to be an asshole. I'm doing it because I think that the game can be better or the community can sure. better or they can do better and it can improve things. So yes, I worry about it, but I also think if, if a publisher is gonna be that upset about something I say, then I don't wanna work for them anyway. I mean, that's a, that's a ni nice way to think about it. Of course, you know, opinions and stuff can, can get everyone in trouble. I feel like, we're, especially in this day and age, yeah. I, I, I have a filter on everything. Everything I say, as like as soon as one of these is, or I, I, one no, of those. I'm, I'm sure my Code Red guys are in there going, please, for crying out loud, yeah, please but, stop. No, but so this is a, this is a podcast so you, wanna, you want to be, you know, there, you'd like to get the, as much of the, the, what's the word, the filtered, the filtered nonsense. I away. do and I don't, Alex. I think more for me it's about it's about the personality explaining who they are yeah. and their journey. You're just a platform. Ones. Yeah, and, and, and getting some opinions is kind of along the road. Yeah. And if they're comfortable, great. Um, you know, I, I think we recorded the first one with Marcus yesterday. It was it a go? fantastic experience. Yeah. Um, I learned an awful lot about him and I thought I knew him really well. So I'm hoping that people enjoy what he has to say. And actually, some of the more difficult questions I gave him were, were things I thought he would be fine with. Um, Interesting. You know, I, I was like, you know, who's your favorite player you've ever watched? Now, actually, thinking about it afterwards, he spent the best part of 20 odd years in esports. Yeah. Maybe picking one person That's... out was quite tough, actually. Who, after did, he, who did he go like, for? Spoiler I'm alert. Okay, fine. So when, when, when is this episode, like, when, when can we uh, expect it? We're a couple it? of weeks away okay. um, from the podcast. Obviously, we take a lot of time. It's going to be on iTunes. It's going to be on uh, Spotify. It's going to be on TuneIn. Uh, it's going to be on 80 radio stations around the US as well. Wow. It's um, um, our friends at Westwood One who are going to publish it. So it's going to take a couple of weeks before it goes online and goes in the system. But, yeah, keep an eye out for it. It's called The Voice of Esports. The Voice of Esports, available yep. on all platforms. And it will also be part of the Zach Zane show as well. Um, the Zach. Zach Zane show, Zach which Zane. is um, going out on Westwood yeah, yeah. One as well. So, Fantastic. Yeah. No, so, big audience. Yeah, and a, a new audience, perhaps. Yeah. I mean, it links back into what I, I was talking so. with Jake about. Uh, but, but outside of the, 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 the podcast, which is exciting, you, we were having a conversation just before we came out, uh, and you, you, you used the word plateau. Yeah. You said you felt like you didn't have anything to focus, like you didn't have a, you know, goals, goal driven, and you, were, you felt almost an, an ab absent of a goal. Is, is, is the podcast the goal or is there more to come? Um, it's, it's part of a, it's part of a move, not away from hosting, but okay. just, uh, and I'm not retiring, don't get, it's not, nothing like that. I can but see I, the headlines. Yeah, yeah, so, but it's, it's more about, and it might even sound borderline arrogant, but I feel like I've got to a point in my hosting where I feel like I'm doing the same stuff over and over. I don't feel like I'm progressing. I don't feel like I'm improving the way I did before. Uh, and I'm, I can't really put my finger on it because I'm trying to, and I'm trying to incorporate new things and learn. I mean, maybe you can sympathize with you. You've gone through these plateau moments. Yeah, of course. But mine's been a while now. It feels like I've been stuck in fifth gear. And I know I've got another gear, but I can't find it in, it's, I've got a box of neutral somewhere. Yeah. It's motor racing analogies. Yeah, driving analogies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I still have a green license, by the way. Yeah, quite. Um, so yeah, I felt like I needed a bit of a change. and. The opportunity to work with West of One and the podcast came up. I've been writing a book for the last six months on esports, and we have a publisher now. In fact, we have two publishers, which are fighting over which one was the publisher, which is amazing. That's um, so exciting. And that will come out probably in May next year, but we'll finish the book by September this year. It's a primer. It's not going to be like hardcore esports stuff. It's going to be a bit of everything to try and give fans a, a decent inside look to the world of esports, but also non-fans, people that maybe 
got a little bit of interest. They've heard this esports. What's it all about? So is it more general esports, not the talent perspective, or is it the talent perspective? No, as well? it's, it's a real, it's a cross race thing. It's a bit of history. Uh, it talks about people like Billy Mitchell, who set world records in Donkey Kong and Pac-Man back in the day, and it kind of asks, you know, where did esports come from? There's history about the Space Invaders World Championship in there. There's stuff about Deathmatch '95, Fresh, Fatality. Oh my goodness! All that kind yeah. of stuff. But it also examines. The, the origins of Korea and how Korea was influential in esports. It looks at our jobs, what, what goes into our jobs when we go live, how nervous are we, what's yeah. in the background, how many producers have we got in our ear or not, um, how much time we have to fill on show, all that kind of stuff's yeah. in there, um, which I think you'll probably, probably have seen plenty of stuff that you've done in your career as well. Yeah, it's um, But there's also plenty of generic stuff in there for the, for the mainstream kind of, I don't really know what this is, what is a team, how does a team work, who are the people that I should watch in games, what games should I look at, how is the hierarchy, what's a viewer, what, what's, a, what's an orb, yeah. those kind of things will sure. be in there as well. So um, hopefully it'll appeal to a nice cross-section of people, both esports fans and new fans. And uh, does the book have a name? Um, Not that, it, I mean, I know the podcast is already fully named, yeah, it, but have you a working does, title? but I don't know if we're going to publish it like this, so I don't want to spoil so it. Don't do that. Basically, at the moment, <laughs> the working title, and it is just a working title, yeah, yeah, yeah. is um, This Is Esports and How to Spell It. Uh, that's actually quite brilliant yeah <laughs> I didn't come up with that by for, the way that for, wasn't no I would wish I'd be like yeah I came up with that it was easy for anyone watching on the stream who d doesn't follow Paul on Twitter there's probably a few of you perhaps you don't know who Paul is and this is your first experience of him there is one thing that I, I, I imagine I don't even the, know how it got started I, I, you you create you have become a meme I you have become <laughs> a meme for multiple ways I mean there's multiple red eye memes but one of them is you can't stand the capital S but it, that was that was how esports was for, for a long time, I swear. I swear the capital S has been around for, I remember growing up and seeing capital S esports. Yeah, I think, I think you're right, but. But the definition, was it when the definition came out that you no, really no, wanted to? No, before a... that, no, before that. Okay. I, I just, it was one of those things where we, I think we settled on the fact that esports is no longer short for electronic sports, which yeah. is what it was 15 years yeah. ago. I mean, look at ESL. It's just esports now, and it's ubiquitous to the whole industry. That's what it is. The problem then comes is that that then makes it a collective now. And the grammar Nazi in my head says, if it's a collective noun, it's not camel case. It has to have a capital at the start, or if it's in the middle of a sentence, it's all lowercase. Yeah. So I think that's what actually happened. And then I started noticing new people come in, where everyone else was correcting it, yeah. new people would come in and use the capital S. And it was a kind of a pseudo way of going, you must be new. Yeah. But electro like you see like electronic sports. And it's, it's two just, words. It, but it feels like a very quick way of summarizing Yes. You know, when you've only just heard about it yeah. and it's people playing video games, but it's kind of like sporty and there's money involved. Esports with a capital S, you know, like it yeah. makes sense to you. Yeah, but I don't even use that when we talk to, to people, non-endemic brands. We, we tend to call it professional gaming or competitive gaming. We don't, we rarely ever call it esports, yeah. uh, funny enough. It's only when they kind of go, hey, what's all this esports? And most non-endemic brands and companies, they think of esports as being a competitor of football or a competitor of tennis or a competitor of another sport. So I'm like, no, no, no. It's a collection of sports the same way as sports are. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you can't, you can't compare football and esports. You have to compare League of Legends and football. Yes, I'm you on board. If you're comparing football with esports, then you're doing it wrong. But he here is a really interesting question. And I am, I am quite strongly opinionated on this topic. So I'm going to let you talk first. You're using sports. You're using, describing it as a sport. Do you? Care. Do you think we have to be like it is a sport, and then this whole old argument like, oh, it's not physically straining, and then they go, but pool and but golf, and it's just like this horrible, like unnecessary war that, in my mind, I've already made my opinion clear. I'm not very good at this. Doesn't need to even exist. Do you think it's a conversation worth having? Uh, is is I, gaming a sport? You know those. So I think firstly, um, is it a conversation we it's worth having? Um, not for us because we don't care. Um, the mainstream seem very bothered by it. But, but, yeah, where do you think that comes from? Is it because they well, I think it's, it's like a, a lack threat? of education and knowledge and understanding of what we do, and I think that's okay. I mean, yeah. people, there are still a lot of people that we haven't reached yet, that we haven't shown what we do, right? Sure. So I think part of it is us kind of going there and evangelizing and enthusing and educating, but part of it is that we'll never conquer that some, for some people. They've just always believed that we're somehow not a sport, and that's fine. I'm okay with that. They can have that view. I think. For me, do I care if it's a sport or not? No, I, don't, I genuinely don't. But, and I also don't care whether it's in the Olympics or not. No. Uh, I, I think 
they care more about it than we do. Like they need us more than we need them. They need that. That feels like quite, right? quite a big statement, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, but they, but they do. I think they need our demographic more than we need them. Because uh, young people don't play. have the same aspirations yeah. anymore. They want to be a professional video game player. And they want to be on. A, they want to be on Fanatic and Team Liquid rather than Team UK and yeah, Team Yeah, as, as a twenty-something who has a lot of conversations with twenty-somethings, I rarely hear them sipping an IPA, going, "Oh man, that." That long jump's coming up next Thursday. Can't wait to see how far you can jump. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. really. It's but but that said, I still have a healthy respect for the people that want to go and play in the Olympics. I think it's an incredible absolutely. thing to do. It's a, it's I don't a, dislike the Olympics either. Yeah. But I just feel that what they're trying to do in cramming in esports is um, not authentic and ill-informed. And, and I'll tell you why. Because right now they're saying, well, we might have esports if you're lucky. If you're lucky, we might like, have esports we in put that our Olympics, out. right? If you're lucky enough. But we can't have Counter-Strike, that's too violent. Yeah. Well, okay, don't you also run boxing, which kills people and has fatalities and injuries? Do you not run shooting and archery, which, again, if people get out of control, that, those sure. things can hurt people? Sure. I'm not saying those, those <laughs> yeah, athletes I'm, will, but, <laughs> but it has. It's I'm a dangerous board. sport, yeah, right? I'm on board, yeah. Is Counter-Strike really that dangerous then? Has it, has it killed anyone? Has it hurt anyone? Is it a violent video game? Sure, it is, yeah. but understand the fundamentals of eSport and why those players play that game. They don't play that game to run around getting headshots because they're like, yeah, I love killing people and shooting people. And they're not doing that. They're doing it because it's a competitive mode and it's an ability to show, showcase their skills. And isn't that what the Olympics is about? Yeah. Isn't it about showing off the skills at the top end of any sport? Of course. Yeah, any sport. Yeah, I guess. It's an interesting one. I think. The follow-up, follow-on from this conversation is the conversation of, like, how, how can we, as viewers, as esports fans, as people that want to see esports have longevity and succeed, how can we take steps to better stop those? Like, there are boardroom meetings happening with people with influence and and money and you know, a, a, an avenue to help esports in one way or another or be a part of it and do it work properly. How do we? ensure that they're getting the right information. Like, how do we know that there's not someone there who's done a bit of Googling, told a couple of porcupines, sure. and is giving powerful people the wrong impression, the wrong angle, the wrong approach? Like, that's something that I think is becoming something I'm increasingly scared of in this space, is yep. that the, wrong, the right people are getting the wrong information. And I think that's one of esports' current threats. Not that it's going anywhere, but I'm fearful for you know, what if, they, what if they get a little too burned on yeah. their first attempt? No, I mean, it, it's a fair question, and I think um, we do have those people, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, most of them are fake esports consultants on LinkedIn. Um, I've seen your tweets about those. Drive me mad. But I also think we've got some incredible people in our industry, people like Richard Lewis, people like Thorin, people like Suscoots, who will happily call out this crap yeah. and say, no, we're not putting up with that. We've been down this road before. We've been ripped off. We've been... You know, yeah. we've, we've had the, the snake oil guys before, and For we sure. can see them coming a mile away now, right? And I will call that out, and you will call that out. And there are plenty of responsible people that are in privileged positions like us that will call that stuff out, and it won't get far. No? No, it won't. I think we underestimate so a, how powerful we are as a group of people. And, and everyone watching at home. I, like, honestly, I'm always baffled when I go through like a Reddit thread, and so, I see this, like, further deep understanding of whether it be a team or whether it be esports as a whole, these are people that are just fans. Yeah. They enjoy it, they follow it, yeah. and they, have, they, they are capable of very well-structured, yeah. well-thought-out opinions on esports and its future and past. And yet, you know, there's no way for that to get into the ears and the emails of the people that are taking a look at esports for the I mean, first I th time. I think, I think that will happen. It will? But, it, but it's down to us to yeah, educate okay. and re-educate. And we see a lot as an agency, as co-red agency, we see it a lot because we go and see brands and sometimes they've got a, a dim view of a game okay. or whatever. And it's just down to us to change that and, and educate them. And, and I think most sensible people will come around to that. And sometimes it's not even about sensibility, it's about, you know, this brand is a particularly friendly brand to something or other and therefore they can't be seen to do this game. And that makes perfect sense, that's okay. Yeah. Um, that's a bit like the Olympics saying, well, we can't have violent video games. And I totally get why. I was obviously being a bit pedantic earlier, but I understand why. That doesn't mean I have to agree with it. It doesn't sure. mean that I can't educate them better and say, actually, you're wrong. This is, you're, you're treating this the wrong way. And ultimately, and I, I hate to say this in a way, because I'm kind of in that old person's club. I'm over 45, right? Even though mentally I'm still 12. Oh, yeah. But, but I'm going to say it anyway. 
These people will die one day. They okay. will be gone from planet Earth, and the next generation will take over. Right. And your generation and the generation after you won't have these struggles of, oh, it's a violent video game, because you'll understand esports, and you'll understand marketing, and you'll be the next directors of marketing, and you'll be the next owners of the IOC, and all of the regulatory bodies all around the world, and you'll have an acceptance built in already. So unfortunately, some of this is generational. Some of this is going to take us 20 years to get rid of, because we're going to have to wait for these people to die. That is... <laughs> I know it's a bit grim. I mean, it's a bit morbid. It's a bit morbid and it's a bit grim, but there is no telling some of these people. And your, and your, and your suggestion is just that, you know, time passes, water it's like is every wet, sport, right? and eventually... Go back in history and look at any sport where someone has challenged the authority and has said, we need to make this better. Yeah. Like, this sport could be even better. It could be in the 50s or the 60s when television came along for football. And yeah. someone in the FA said, we should jump on this. And they went, oh, no, no guys not for us football's played at 3 p.m on a saturday at the yeah, park and yeah. we're not changing to sundays yeah, 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 right? yeah. well now sky sports dominate football because they change the way that the game is shown right whether that's good or bad doesn't matter that's not right. the argument they yeah. change the they change the game how long did it take for that to happen yeah another when was that first years. suggested right another okay. 40 years 40 years because it was the 60s to like maybe the 90s maybe 30 years okay. right but that's how long it took. Formula One's had a similar road. It didn't have a single sponsorship in Formula One until the late 60s. And then cigarette brands started sponsoring whole cars. And we all know where that went in yeah. the 70s and the 80s, right? Some iconic liveries, but also some bad health signals as well coming from that. Someone somewhere said, guys, we shouldn't be taking these guys' money. And eventually it took 20 yeah, years sure. and we didn't, right? But that's generational change. That's not. It's partly institutional, but it's not someone there and then fighting the good fight forever. So, uh, is a mistake a mistake I may have made then? Is I've been expecting people in, to to have an immediate or you know yearly impact right. and make changes that can't well, happen that's, without that's a generation shift. That's, we live in a really fast-paced industry. I mean, it changes every month yes. there is a new so it's not unreasonable to expect that level of change but i think it's going to take us longer i do okay yeah that's that is a i mean it's almost a relief that those conversations perhaps in 20 30 years time they, just, will, they, they won't be, be totally necessary different. no they won't even be necessary I, people won't even be having that because they'll understand at the base level what what is esports I, for why, some reason why I, do we have it it's a competitive mode yes yeah. it's, it's the pinnacle of that game yeah it's people that can do things that you and i can only dream of doing or maybe can do once every thousand times we attempt it, but these guys can do it every time. Yeah, it's that, that incredible ability that these people have to play this video game. And that's no different to any other sport. It's yeah. no different from watching Simple fall off a ledge in midair, no scope someone in the head, right? To win a round at a major, that's no different from watching Gareth Bale score an overhead kick in a Champions League final. For me. For you, The yes. similarities yeah. between that that I can totally get. Yeah. And, and when you think of the fans of one and the fans of the other, what's the reaction? Identical. Cheering, unbelievable, yeah. I can't believe what I've just watched. It's the same reaction. Sure. Cheering and, and I've got goosebumps on my arm right now. Literally, can you see that in 4K? <laughs> Literally, right? From thinking about the simple, falling off a ledge. Yeah. And so your, your, your suggestion is to kind of put a pin in all of this. Your I'm, suggestion is... I'm still going to fight the fight. Yeah. Because I still think it's a fight worth fighting. But I don't expect to win in my lifetime. We've got, we're in it for the long haul, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Paul Shalliner, Red Eye, Reed E. Yee. I love that. <laughs> Not a story for now. We're supposed to be wrapping this one up. But uh, podcast, let's quickly get, let's yes. hit those one more time. If you are interested in checking out the podcast, they can get it. We're saying, we haven't got a time frame yet. Three uh, weeks? It's going to be in the next couple of weeks. So okay. I'll announce it on my Twitter, so make sure you're following me on Twitter. That's um, at Paul Shalliner. Uh, at Paul Shalliner, yeah. Um, it'll be on Westwood One's uh, circuit. So if you're familiar with Westwood One in the US, it'll be on one of the 80 stations, radio stations they have in the US. It'll also be on iTunes, Spotify. Tune in and a couple of other places as well. So yeah, it'll right. be up there. If you want to find it, you'll find it. Yeah. And of course, there's a book as well to look forward to in a, in a bit of a more May, advanced May next year. time frame. May next year. May. There you go. Heard it here first. So a book, a podcast. Red Eye, we love you. Thank you. And we are going to be taking a bit of a break. Coming up next, though, we're going to be talking to a fantastically talented voice actress and learning all about how it works and how many, maybe just maybe get a couple of impressions out of her as well. Uh, anyway, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> 